As some of you might have seen over the last few months, Ubisoft has been involved in a global crisis due to what employees describe as a toxic work culture that involves bullying, harassment, threats, sexism, and even sexual predation, sexual assault, and rape. Since people started speaking out about this months ago, Ubisoft has already taken some action and it appears that at least 10 senior staff members, ranging all the way up to director level, have already been fired or forced to resign. If you want a more detailed insight into some of these allegations by employees, I recommend a recent summary article by Kotaku, link in the description. As I am recording and editing the voiceover for this video, Ubisoft have just come out with another official statement. Let me play that for you in case you haven't seen it yet otherwise feel free to skip this. This summer, we learned that certain Ubisoft employees did not uphold our company's values and that our systems failed to protect the victims of their behavior. I am truly sorry to everyone who was hurt. We have taken significant steps to remove or sanction those who violated our values and code of conduct and we are working hard to improve our systems and processes. We are also focused on improving diversity and inclusivity at all levels of the company. For example, we will invest an additional $1 million over the next five years in our graduate program. The focus will be on creating opportunities for underrepresented groups, including women and people of color to join and thrive at Ubisoft. We are at the start of a long journey. Real change will take time. But I am determined to do everything in my power to ensure everyone at Ubisoft feels welcomed, respected, and safe, and to rebuild the trust our teams, fans, and players have in us. Also around the world, this year continues to be a time of societal unrest. I want to be clear, Ubisoft stands for equality and respect for all. To conclude, I'm fully committed to leading the change at Ubisoft and to ensuring we always uphold and exemplify our core values in the company, the industry, the community and in our games. I've always believed that great games have the power to bring people together and provide an outlet for self-expression and growth. This is essential, now more than ever. With that in mind, I hope you will enjoy some of the amazing games the teams at Ubisoft have been developing for you. Thank you. But it's not just Ubisoft employees who were the victims of this enduring work culture crisis. And the reason I feel compelled to make this video is because I have also been on the receiving end of unprofessional, unacceptable and downright criminal behaviour from Ubisoft staff members and after several attempts to discuss the matter with my contacts at Ubisoft and being ignored, I see no other option to clear my name than to share these stories publicly. And hopefully my voice will be just one more that goes towards helping to clean up the serious issues that Ubisoft has. I will be sharing a story of how I was physically threatened at a Rainbow Six event by a Ubisoft staff member who was drunk off his face, as well as details of defamation and match fixing by another. And as serious as physically threatening behaviour may sound, it's actually the defamation that has resulted in serious, long-lasting effects for me. Very quick notes before I get into these stories. Firstly, since I'm based in the UK, most of my interactions have been with the UK team here and throughout the several years that I got to work with them quite frequently, I was always treated in a friendly and respectful manner. Ubisoft Worldwide has some long-standing and serious issues, but in all of the contact that I've had with a variety of people at Ubisoft UK, I never felt mistreated or taken advantage of in any way. Furthermore, this video is not an attack piece against Ubisoft as a whole. My negative experiences have been limited to a small handful of individuals, all of them based in the Montreal office. And finally, I want to make it perfectly clear that this video is not a call to action. 
If you have not been directly affected by the behaviors of Justin Kruger and Craig Robinson, aka Epi, then please do not contact them in any way based on the stories I will be sharing today. My goal here is to clear my name and add my voice to the chorus of victims that these guys have mistreated during their time on the Rainbow Six account, but under no circumstances am I trying to direct any harassment towards them. If you want to support my message today, feel free to share and spread the video, but please do not DM, email, or tweet at these guys. Two wrongs don't make a right, and as much as I feel wronged by their past behaviors towards me, I'm explicitly asking you not to take any actions towards them based on this video. With that out of the way, let's start out with Justin Kruger, former community development manager on the Rainbow Six account. Throughout my time working with Ubisoft, I've only ever been in contact with Justin three times. Once via email, when they were launching their Rainbow Six Community Video Hub, once at the Invitational 2019, when he guided a bunch of us to a content creator autograph session, and then, sadly, once during the after party at the same Invitational in 2019. It was during that party that it was announced that Justin was being promoted and that he would be leaving the Rainbow Six project, and during that announcement, Justin gave a brief speech where it became clear that he was not only quite emotional about the matter, but that early on in the evening he was already quite drunk. I personally was not drinking that night and stuck with either soft drinks or non-alcoholic lager throughout the entire time, so I was fully sober during the entire party, and this can be confirmed by multiple Ubisoft employees. I mention this because I want to make it perfectly clear that there is no chance that I'm in any way misremembering what happened that night, or that me being tipsy might have unintentionally influenced the interaction with Justin. Anyway, after the speech, I didn't see him for quite some time, but about an hour, an hour and a half later, I was in a conversation with a Pro League analyst when Justin was passing by and stopped. The analyst congratulated Justin and wished him all the best with many hugs and shoulder clapping, and after they were finished, I too clapped Justin on the shoulder, congratulated him on his new role, wished him all the best, and told him that the entire Siege community would miss him. In response, I got an angry scowl. He threw his head back, stuck out his chin, and waved his hand in my face in a gesture that was basically telling me to fuck off while saying, yeah, right. Then he brought his hands down and briefly kept both of his fists clenched by his side while standing in front of me still scowling with his chin up in a clearly threatening manner. To this day, I don't know what I did to Justin for him to act so aggressively and threateningly towards me. I get that there was a lot of alcohol involved, but that still doesn't explain how he went from hugging and laughing one second to being so aggressive the next. And the incident didn't end there either. After staring me down for a couple of seconds, Justin turned around and saw an unopened bottle of champagne standing on a table near us. I don't know who that bottle belonged to, but it wasn't us and it wasn't Justin. Nevertheless, he walked over, grabbed it, and then came back towards us and began very deliberately opening the bottle. First tearing off the foil wrapper, then opening the wire cage turn by turn while staring both of us in the face. And when he finally opened the bottle, he gave each of us one last stare and then threw his head back and started chugging from the bottle as long as he could go before the bubbles got the better of him. He then brought the bottle down, stared at us again, and asked what? You think I was going to share this with you? With a tone that was still angry and quite hostile. And when neither of us could muster a response because we were just too shocked by the behavior, he seemed to get bored with us quite suddenly and simply turned and walked away. The whole incident was quite bizarre and has to be one of the most unprofessional behaviors I've witnessed in my entire working life. And look, Stealing a bottle of champagne, which probably cost upwards of $100 and might have belonged to anyone, including any of the Pro League teams that were there, is pretty bad. But no matter how drunk you are, there is absolutely no excuse for aggressive and threatening behavior at a work event, especially when there are external partners such as pro teams, casters, analysts, and content creators present. Now the next morning, I did report this incident to my Ubisoft UK contact, and I asked him if he knew anything that I might have done to annoy Justin. All I got in response was a shrug and, no, I don't know of anything you could have done. And that was it. The matter never went any further than that, and to be fair, I partially take responsibility for that. I could have, and maybe should have, pushed to make a formal complaint about the matter, but instead, I chose to simply put it down to an unpleasant personal incident 
and left it at that. I still don't know what on earth I did to anger Justin in that way, but luckily that was the last I ever saw or heard of him. But this is by far not the only incident I know of. I know for a fact that other content creators and even Ubisoft staff have been on the receiving end of unprofessional, threatening and bullying behaviour from him and this is why I am now choosing to share my story alongside all of the other stories about problems at Ubisoft that have already been told. My incident may have only lasted a couple of minutes, but I don't think that that behaviour was in any way acceptable, and if my testimony can become part of a larger pattern of complaints, then I'm glad to add that additional piece to the picture of Justin Kruger's overall conduct at Ubisoft. But like I mentioned in the beginning, this unfortunate incident is relatively minor compared to the misconduct that Craig Robinson, also a former community development manager on the Rainbow Six Project, has engaged in. For almost a year now, I have had irrefutable evidence that Craig has knowingly and purposefully spread false accusations against me within Ubisoft with the explicit goal of harming my personal and professional reputation and damaging my ability to earn a living. That almost sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? How can a senior Ubisoft employee be so petty and so unprofessional that he would literally risk his career just to harm some mediocre YouTube guy off the internet? Well, it turns out that all it takes is to annoy one of his close personal friends. Last year, between August and October, things became a bit personal between a Ubisoft employee and me. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but it is important to briefly touch on this. Luckily, almost all of our communications were over Twitter DMs and I still have the entire thread to prove exactly what happened. These messages prove that she made the first advances and that she repeatedly encouraged me to keep in touch with her. They also prove that throughout the entire three months, she was quite purposefully stringing me along alongside a whole bunch of other guys. And finally, this message thread also proves that I was always courteous and friendly throughout the entire affair and at no point did I send any messages that could be interpreted as disrespectful, dismissive or rude and there was certainly nothing but absolutely nothing in any of my messages that could in any way be classed as harassment. When I started to get the feeling that she was messing me about, I asked her on repeated occasions whether she would like me to leave her alone and each and every time she responded with lies and excuses about her previous behaviour and even actively encouraged me to stay in touch. And sadly, at least for a while, I chose to believe those lies. Now of course over three months there are quite a lot of messages we exchanged but I'm not going to be showing all of them. Uh, if anyone does want to doubt my summary of the conversation, I am more than willing to release the entire thread but for now I'm going to be just showing a few of these messages. If you want to read these for yourself then do feel free to hit pause at the appropriate times. But with that let me skip forward to the end. Was it quite upsetting to find out eventually that someone I'd chosen to trust was playing around with me emotionally? Yeah, it was. And I told her so. Now, out of all of the messages over three months of almost daily communications, this is the number one most embarrassing for me, and I'm purposefully including it because this is the absolute worst it gets. I knew for a fact that I'd been repeatedly and quite purposefully lied to, and so I chose to send a long-winded, whiny message complaining about that. Now, could I have chosen to simply not send this message? Yeah, I could have. And with hindsight, I think that would have definitely been the safer thing to do. But at the same time, I don't think that this message in any way excuses the way I have been treated by various Ubisoft employees since then. And sadly, all of this happened right before a week-long balancing workshop at Ubisoft's Barcelona offices, which she had organised and that I had committed to taking part in many months earlier. I was pretty upset at the way that this person had treated me and really worried about how the awkward matter between us would affect that week. So I tried to catch a brief moment with her with the intention of clearing the matter up, apologising for any awkwardness and just putting all of that crap behind us. She chose not to speak with me in person but at least I got the messages across in my DMs. The whole affair had been pretty unfortunate and I had been pretty upset by being treated so unkindly on a personal level. But at least I'd said my piece and the matter was settled. Or so I thought. Because the very next day she told all of her Montreal-based colleagues and many of the Barcelona-based ones that I'd been harassing her and that I made her feel quote 
very uncomfortable. And unsurprisingly, making such a serious accusation against me turned an awkward situation into a complete nightmare. I don't blame any of the Ubisoft staff for their weird behavior towards me that week. They had been told a very serious lie, and of course they're not going to question their friend and work colleague, they just believed whatever she told them. And I also regret how much this shitty situation ended up affecting the other two content creators who were there during that week, Get Flanked and Prodigio Pete. It really wasn't a fun experience for any of us, and they certainly didn't deserve to get dragged into this mess. But like I said earlier, I still have the entire three months worth of communications with this woman and they prove that I neither said or did anything that could be classed as disrespectful, dismissive or rude and there was certainly nothing along the lines of harassment. But luckily, the event only lasted a week and that was it. Finally done with all of that crap. Except of course, it wasn't over and the worst was actually yet to come. Like I mentioned, this woman is a close personal friend of Craig's and so he decided that he would abuse his position in order to punish me. The only problem for him was that he didn't have the authority to really do anything against me and so he came up with a harebrained plot that involved two sets of false accusations and threatening hundreds of Ubisoft employees into silence to try to cover it up. Let me explain. One week after the end of the Barcelona workshop, I received this email. Due to your conduct during the Operator Balancing Sprint workshop in Barcelona, Spain, we regret to inform you that Ubisoft will no longer be working with you moving forward. This includes future activations such as the London event taking place on October 24th. We have and always will value the content you have created over the years. That said, we cannot and will not accept behavior directed towards Ubisoft staff that is disrespectful, dismissive or rude. So apparently, due to disrespectful, dismissive or rude behavior, I was blacklisted worldwide from ever working with Ubisoft again. Except that these wishy-washy, vague and meaningless accusations are a thinly veiled pretext. The real reason that Craig spent an entire week trying to dig up dirt on me was simple revenge over the unfortunate personal matter. How do I know this? Well. It's Ubisoft we're talking about here. I have written messages from two separate Ubisoft employees who were present in Barcelona. And these messages confirm that at no point during the week did I behave in any way disrespectful, dismissive or rude and in fact they outright admit that I was being targeted because of the false allegations against me. Please excuse me if I don't show these messages in the video, the people who sent them risked their jobs by communicating this info and I will not put them at risk for standing up for the truth. Rest assured though, there is more than enough evidence provided by Craig himself to prove what he did. And like I said earlier, I don't blame anyone for believing those lies, except for Craig Robinson. If he was punishing me like this because he genuinely believed that I'd done something wrong, then why not say so? Why not accuse me of harassment? Why make up those vague allegations as a pretext? And in fact, I immediately responded to this email politely asking for more details on these allegations against me. It would be really interesting to hear exactly when I was supposedly dismissive towards whom and in exactly what way. Especially when you consider that I have messages from Ubisoft staff members that confirm that they never witnessed any such behavior. But surprise, surprise, I never received an answer and that is because this pretext accusation was purposefully kept as vague as possible. I think there are two simple reasons for this. First of all, he knew that if he accused me of harassment, I would have the proof to be able to defend myself against that accusation. And secondly, during the week that he spent trying to find any excuse, anything at all that he could use against me, he examined the entire message thread between his friend and me and actually concluded that she was at fault. How do I know that? Well, like I said before, this is Ubisoft we're talking about and I actually received the following email one and a half hours before getting Craig's email with the official accusations against me. Hello all, and by all he means every single Ubisoft employee worldwide who was in any way connected to the Rainbow Six project. Not just hundreds of employees in Montreal and Barcelona and Paris and goodness knows which other studios, but also any local and regional PR and marketing teams that were assigned to the project. This memo was sent to hundreds of people. 
I wanted to be certain that we're all on the same page for how we, as developers, interact with community members, players and content creators. Please ensure that communication with community members, players and content creators is going through appropriate channels, comdev or PR. While direct, private interactions with these groups can seem harmless, it can sometimes put you, the project and the company at risk. It becomes particularly dicey when we need to cut ties with someone as they will reach out to everyone they can to plead their case. With this in mind, please ensure that any future communications and interactions with the content creator Rogue9 are forwarded to Karen and myself before you respond. Thank you. Honestly, I almost don't know where to start with this. This email is a massive admission of guilt and wrongdoing on so many levels that it's almost unbelievable that Craig would be stupid enough to put something like this in writing. Keep in mind that this email is specifically about me and at its core has the purpose of cutting me off from any unmonitored contact with Ubisoft employees. And that's a bit strange, isn't it? If my crimes were really being disrespectful, dismissive or rude, then why on earth would he feel the need to take such an extreme measure as to try to cut me off from communicating with anyone on the Rainbow Six team? Of course, that makes no sense and the obvious reason for this action was to hide the fact that he had made up two different accusations. One official one about me being dismissive and one secret and absolutely false one about harassment and the only way that he could get away with that was to make sure that I never found out about the lies he was spreading behind my back. As I mentioned, I know this for a fact because Ubisoft employees risked their jobs to get me that information, but if you wanted any other proof, all we need to do is look at Twitter. Immediately after Craig put his dirty plan into action, one of his subordinates on the Montreal R6 comdev team outright blocked me on Twitter. In the past, I have had nothing but friendly interactions with her, both online and in person, and she was not present in Barcelona, so her blocking me can only be based on what she was told about me. And look, if the story that Craig was spreading about me was really about disrespectful, dismissive or rude behaviour, then how does it make sense for someone with whom I've only ever had positive interactions to block me? It doesn't, of course. The story she was told was so serious that blacklisting me and unfollowing me wasn't good enough, she had to take that extra step of blocking me. But like I've already mentioned twice, I don't blame anyone for believing the lies they were told about me. It's not her fault and the only reason I show this is to demonstrate beyond a shadow of a doubt what Craig's plan was. He knowingly spread a very serious lie about me and then tried to cover it up by cutting me off from ever being able to communicate with anyone at Ubisoft again. All of this came after a full week of Craig desperately trying to find any possible pretext to punish me over the way his friend had treated me. He almost certainly read through the entire message thread between us and came away with two conclusions. Firstly, there was nothing in any of the messages that he would be able to use against me and secondly, the thread actually proves that the behaviour of his friend in initiating and encouraging flirty personal contact with an external content creator was unprofessional and not just put her job but Ubisoft's reputation at risk. He openly admits this in his memo. While direct, private interactions with these groups can seem harmless, it can sometimes put you, the project and the company at risk. It becomes particularly dicey when we need to cut ties with someone. He knew, he absolutely knew that if anything, I was the victim in that unfortunate personal affair between his friend and me and he still chose to punish me over it. And he didn't do this to protect Ubisoft or the Rainbow Six Project but quite the opposite, by doing so he knowingly and purposefully put the company at risk. And look, if Craig had abused his professional position on the Rainbow Six Project to simply not invite me to any Montreal based events anymore. That would have been dishonest, corrupt and potentially not in the best interest of Ubisoft but let's face it, he would have 100% gotten away with it. But that wasn't good enough for him. He really wanted to make sure that I suffer serious consequences over this matter and the only way he could influence Ubisoft UK into cutting ties with me and blacklisting me for life was by secretly spreading a very serious accusation that he knew was false. And let's be clear here, 
knowingly and purposefully spreading false accusations with the explicit motive of harming my personal and professional reputation and damaging my business prospects? That is the textbook definition of defamation and it is a very serious legal matter. In order to get personal revenge on me on behalf of his colleague and close friend, Craig Robinson decided on a dishonest plan that not only puts his job at risk, but even leaves Ubisoft legally exposed. And you know what? If this was a one-off and Craig simply got a little bit creative over a single personal matter and this was the only time that he abused his position to harm people he didn't like, then I could almost argue for putting it down as an unfortunate mistake. But sadly, my case is in no way a one-off because Craig has done the exact same thing before. During the event in Barcelona, Craig told us all a story about a Ubisoft employee that was fired over toxic chat messages in Rainbow Six Siege. He told a whole story about how a support ticket was submitted where someone made the allegation about toxic messages that came from an account with a dev charm and how the comdev team had to initiate an entire investigation and how they had to bring that developer into a room to interrogate them about this matter and how eventually that person was fired because of this. Well, I believe that I've managed to identify and speak to this person and they unequivocally deny that they were fired. It appears that once again, Craig is using his little trick of secretly spreading false accusations in order to discredit and punish somebody that he doesn't like on a personal level. And the list of crimes doesn't end there. I know for a fact that during his time on the Rainbow Six comdev team, Craig Robinson engaged in match fixing of content creator show matches. He openly sabotaged teams and there are even allegations that he ordered teams to throw matches. Why would he do such a thing? We can only speculate. Maybe it was because he had stacked the other team with creators that he was personally friends with. Maybe it was done in order to fulfill some kind of PR agenda. Who knows? But is it really match fixing when it's only a content creator match? Well, if there's tens of thousands of dollars in prize money at stake, I would argue that it is. And at the very least, it's a breach of contract because let's face it, nobody signed up to throw a match and walk away with less money. Repeated cases of defamation in order to harm people for personal reasons, openly manipulating matches where tens of thousands of dollars are at stake, those are really serious actions and like I mentioned right at the very beginning of the video before launching into all of this, those cases are just the very tip of the iceberg. Both Craig Robinson and Justin Kruger repeatedly behaved in ways that were utterly unprofessional and corrupt. They ran the Rainbow Six comdev team according to their own personal goals rather than what was objectively best for Ubisoft as a company. The complaints against them range from rude or condescending behavior and even harassment and threats to outright criminal actions. And their victims were not just content creators or other community members, but even Ubisoft staff. The reason why nobody really knows about these things is simple. Ubisoft staff members have been outright ordered to keep quiet about the ongoing allegations and investigations regarding staff misconduct. Anyone speaking out about Craig, Justin or anyone else would be risking their career to do so. And when it comes to community developers like the Rain Bros, of course most of their victims are people like content creators, maybe pro players, artists or cosplayers, and none of them dares to speak out because of the very serious consequences it could have for them too. I myself have kept quiet for almost a year now and honestly, I didn't want to take these matters public. I chose not to make an official complaint about Justin Kruger's inexcusable behavior because I had no desire to harm his career in any way. And even though Craig's actions against me were clearly illegal and I've had all of the proof about what he was really doing from day one, I tried on multiple occasions to get the matter resolved privately with Ubisoft and not even with the goal of making a complaint and having Craig investigated. Since last October, I reached out to various contacts on several occasions with the simple goal of clearing my name. That's all I wanted. But in that sense, Craig's scheme sadly worked really well. None of the contacts I reached out to ever even bothered to acknowledge my messages. And I suppose I can't blame them because let's face it, they were explicitly ordered not to communicate with me. I really wish that this matter could have been handled sensibly and professionally with a simple conversation or two. Never 
has it been, nor is it now my intention to harm the reputation of Ubisoft as a company, and initially I didn't even want to make this an official complaint despite the way I was treated. But I wasn't allowed to clear my name internally, and now with all of the allegations about serious misconduct by Ubisoft staff, I felt that I also need to add my voice to the chorus. Do I think that now that I've spoken out publicly about this misconduct that was committed against me, the matter will instantly be resolved? No. <laughs> no way. Compared to some of the very serious allegations that have come out over the last few months, including actual assault, sexual harassment, sexual predation, sexual assault and even rape, my complaints come across as rather petty. And the sad fact is that there will be people in Montreal who will look at this video and see me as even more of an enemy now. The very serious lie that Craig spread about me both within Ubisoft and beyond has already had its effect. I have lost count of the number of contacts who over the months unfollowed, muted or even blocked me on social media over allegations that I can prove are not true. And will they all turn around now and go, oh my god, that was a lie? I never knew, let me reach out again. No. Because at the end of the day, this is still a case of a friend and colleague versus some shithead off the internet. Despite the fact that I can prove that Craig knowingly and purposefully orchestrated an entire scheme in order to harm me over a purely personal matter, I'm still the outsider. And when it comes to harming me, he's been quite successful. For almost a year now, I've been completely cut off from official and unofficial contact with Ubisoft. I'm not invited to events anymore, I don't get any of the little marketing goodie boxes, I don't get to take part in sponsored activations, my guide videos have been blocked from the new game plan platform and more. But the effects have even gone far beyond that. I mentioned before how one of my greatest regrets about this whole deal was that it also ended up affecting both Get Flanked and Prodigio Pete. They did not deserve to get dragged into that mess, and so when the situation arose that with me still on the podcast, they would both be cut off from cooperating with Ubisoft Montreal, it wasn't even a question that I would leave. All of the sponsored episodes with dev interviews that the podcast has had since I left would not have been possible, and so I don't for one second blame the guys for asking me to leave. They had no choice in the matter, and they did the right thing in continuing without me. But I'm sure that Craig was rubbing his hands in delight that not only had he destroyed my professional standing within Ubisoft, but he also managed to destroy my long-running cooperation with my two closest friends in the Rainbow Six Siege community. And sadly, it still doesn't end there. I recently read a Twitter thread by a Montreal-based contractor who had the misfortune of experiencing the toxic culture at Ubisoft, and her stories really highlighted the psychological consequences that this kind of treatment has. When you have been the victim of wrongdoing, but everyone around you just keeps going as if nothing happened, it leads to inadvertent but very serious gaslighting. Many times over the past year, I've seriously begun to doubt myself over this matter. Maybe I was the bad guy after all. Maybe me politely making it clear that this woman's behavior towards me was quite hurtful did cross some kind of line. Maybe that was harassment after all. Maybe I deserved all of this. It becomes really hard to shake those kinds of doubts and they just became a constant burden that has been sitting in the back of my mind for almost a year now. And imagine if Craig's scheme had actually worked. Imagine if I'd never been sent the memo about him trying to cut me off from all contact in order to keep his actions secret. Imagine if I hadn't received messages from separate Ubisoft employees confirming that my conduct in Barcelona was fine and that all of this was happening because Craig chose to harm my reputation on behalf of his friend. Imagine just all of a sudden everybody stops talking to me with no explanation. Now that would have been gaslighting on an organized scale. Now, I might only have told a handful of stories today, but trust me on this, there are many people who have their own stories to tell, and the fact is that the behavior of Craig and Justin has already been harming Ubisoft. I've received comments on my videos mentioning that viewers feel that my attitude towards Siege has changed so that I'm far more critical now, and I can't deny it. I used to look at problems in the game with a glass half full approach and I used to be able to discuss the issues with devs before finalizing my videos. That isn't possible anymore so yes, my criticism has become harsher over the last few seasons 
And I can guarantee you that I'm not the only one. If you think of the prominent people in the Siege community who are the most outspoken about problems with the game or with Ubisoft, whether they're content creators or pro players or anyone else, I guarantee you that behind each one of those people is at least one story of being on the receiving end of misconduct by Ubisoft employees. First and foremost among them, the Rain Bros. It's great that Ubisoft is taking the allegations about its toxic culture seriously, and while firing a set of top executives is a great first step, more action is needed for there to be any credible improvement. Now right at the beginning I mentioned that this video is not a call to action, and if you've not been directly affected, I'm asking you to not approach the people I mentioned in any way. But I also want to say this. If you have been directly affected by the behaviour of either Justin or Craig in the past, then do please do something about it. Whether you're an external partner or a Ubisoft employee, if you've experienced any negative behaviour from either of these two individuals, from unprofessional, rude, condescending, demeaning behaviours, through threats and harassment, all the way to physically threatening behaviour, defamation, match-fixing and more, you need to add your story to the list of complaints. I understand that content creators and other partners don't want to speak out publicly out of fear of retaliation and that Ubisoft staff members would literally be risking their jobs by speaking out. So, if you can't speak out publicly, then please make sure that you at least submit your claims via the anonymous portal that is used in the current investigations. In his public letter, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimot has made it clear that not just Ubisoft employees, but also external partners will be able to submit claims via this service. So if you're a content creator and you don't feel safe to speak out publicly, then please reach out to your contacts at Ubisoft and ask for the opportunity to submit anonymous complaints. Because even though the handful of stories I've shared today are absolutely grounds enough for both Justin and Craig to be let go from the company, it will be the volume of complaints that will help paint the full picture about both of these guys. Please do take a moment of your time to submit your own complaints and make sure that these guys cannot continue with their dishonest and unacceptable behaviours in future. Are there people who have had positive experiences with either of these guys? Of course there are, but let's face it, corruption works both ways. They've harmed people who they didn't like for personal reasons, but at the same time they've also helped people for personal reasons. And if you are one of those people who's had good experiences with the Rain Bros, good for you. I'm glad you didn't get to see their bad side, but please do think twice before you come out in defense of either Craig or Justin, because your positive experience in no way counterbalances the negative experiences of others. Now firing a handful of top executives is a great first step in cleaning up Ubisoft's internal issues, but unless these measures also include middle management who put the company's reputation at stake and even risk legal action with their behaviour, then nothing will change. These guys will continue on their way and will just become the executives of the future. If you've had problems with either of these guys or anyone else at Ubisoft in the past and you don't feel comfortable sharing these stories, then please at least make sure you share them anonymously with the team conducting the investigations right now. The more people who can share their stories about Justin and Craig, the better. And like I said, my stories are just the very tip of the iceberg. And that's it. I'm sorry for the long break in content on the channel. I made the choice to make this video almost two months ago and it's been a real struggle to motivate myself to drag all of this crap back up again. But I hope that in the long run, something good will come of this. And now that it's done, I will do my best to put all of this shit behind me and get back into the swing of things. Thank you all for your support. Honestly, the only reason I even want to get back into Siege at all at this stage is all of the positive encouragement I've had from the community over the years. So with that, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.